Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and this might shock you, but I own the world's greatest PlayStation 3 console. Strong stuff, but he's right. So let's have a quick look at the PlayStation 3s on the market. If you've got one of these super slim PS3s, you're at the bottom of the pile. It's basically one step up from being an Xbox owner. Next up is the PS3 fat 80 gig console. Crap build quality, but looks pretty cool. Although, ultimately, a tease, because it looks like the OG PlayStation 3, but with many of the features cut out. The next social run is held by the owners of the PS3 Slim. Great build quality, although still lacks the hardware of the launch PS3s. A step above the Slim is the EU launch 60 gig PS3. Has the OG fat style, has the fancy memory card slots, and can play PS2 games, although only through a mix of hardware and software emulation. At the top of the PS3 model pile is the American slash Japanese launch edition. This is the cool fat style, has all the extra memory card slots and can play PS2 games via pure hardware emulation as the full PS2 chipset is actually built into this model. And it's the Japanese model of this PS3 that I'm using for this video. So I'm using the only PS3 model that has hardware to perfectly play PS2 and PS1 games. But how do I improve upon this? Easy, hack the console and install custom firmware. Normally the Japanese OG model is still region locked in regards to PS1 and PS2 games but with the firmware hacked we can remove the region lock so PS1 and PS2 discs from any region will now work on this PS3 but this is only scratching the surface let's really open this up and see what we can do and just before some dickhead says that actually I could use an early model PS3 debug unit to also do this I'll tell you why my model is better debug units lack blu-ray movie disc playback although probably not a feature i'm going to use it's an extra feature my console can do but secondly and probably more importantly my console doesn't have the word test written on it like the debug units do this wouldn't matter if i was some sort of slob pc gamer who isn't worried about things looking shit but i'm a glorious console player who has his machines on full display so yes this is what peak ps3 performance looks like to start off with let's have a peek at the xmb on my ps3 this has the rebug custom firmware so if we go to the settings list at the bottom we have an option called debug settings this is a hidden feature the xmb and is only normally visible to sony technicians when they bring a ps3 in to be fixed here you can debug certain system features change some of the networking features and even set your system to fake playstation plus and saved game ownership yes the bottom up option is PSP emulation. Yes, Sony really did bake PSP emulation into the PS3. And yes, I'll show you more on this later. Another feature of having custom firmware is being able to install signed and unsigned homebrew programs. It's as easy as going to a website, downloading some homebrew, sticking it on a USB stick and installing it from that stick into your PS3. When you think of homebrew, you think of emulation. Like you just saw, you can get separate emulators for each system. But why bother with that when you can just get RetroArch and do it all in one program? It works just like it does on PC and still allows the use of retro achievements. Or you could be like me and are too lazy to reconfigure your Mega CD BIOS files so you still use the Sega RetroArch you had before just to play that one system. But nevertheless, you too can now feel the sheer enjoyment of playing Time Gal on the Sega Mega CD but through your PS3. Although, now that I think about it, I'm being a total retard. Why don't I just download the PS1 version of Time Gal so I don't have to play Mega CD shit vision Because with this PS3 setup, I could do just that. With a custom firmware add-on called Webman, I've added PlayStation ISO or virtual disk support right into the XMB. So entire PS1, PS2 and PS3 game discs can be saved to the console's hard drive. Or I could just go to Google and type in the magic words. But don't do that, because it's naughty. You definitely shouldn't search for PlayStation ISO files on the internet. Don't download them, and don't end up having games like these on your hard drive.
you don't have to be in this for the full scale piracy. You could just use this as an opportunity to play games that were Japanese only, but now have quality fan translations. Want to play Hideo Kojima's classic police noughts on the PS1, but now fan translated into English? Maybe you're more of a Persona 2 fan, or want to play the Sumi Innocent Sin version, or like me, you want to play the Japanese only fantasy style remake on the PS2, which having a fan translated version into English makes it possible. And who doesn't want to play Monster Hunter 2 on the PS2, which only got released in Japan? Well, you could be playing all these games on real PlayStation hardware, but in English. Installing these fan translated ISO games is pretty easy. Along with some other apps, I use in my modding folder, I have one called Multiman, as well as some other features. The main draw for me, it has a Windows style file manager. So it's very easy to transfer data from a USB drive and then put it into the correct place on my PS3 hard drive. Another couple of apps you might have spotted in the same folder as Multiman are uh, PSN Patch and React PSN. These are used to enable PSN digital titles I've downloaded. You see, as well as PlayStation 3 disc ISOs, you can also find websites that offer games from the PSN store. These games need to be licensed to your user account before the PlayStation 3 will allow you to play them. But seeing this is a console that is not only running custom firmware, but these are pirate copies of illegal digital games, getting a real license is not going to happen. Now, before self-righteous people start screaming at me for piracy, consider this. We don't know how much longer the PlayStation Store will stay open on the PS3. So having a way to keep these titles available to gamers is great for video game preservation. Take one title on my list, OutRun. This game has been delisted for the PlayStation Store ever since Sega lost the Ferrari license. I bought this game on my non-jailbroken slim PS3 and if I need to, I can just download it again from my previously purchased list. Which is more than I can say for my Xbox 360 where my digital copy of Double Dragon HD is well and truly gone forever. But what happens when Sony discontinues store support for PlayStation 3? If I have a hard drive failure, these games are gone for good. Having PSN digital store games available on a pirate website means that these games are no longer gone forever. They can continue to be played long after official support has ended. With that said, I managed to bag some cracking games. Daytona USA, GTI Club Rally, Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown, and Jet Set Radio, just to name a few. So I'm pretty glad I upgraded my hard drive to half a terabyte a long time ago. The final section on my PlayStation 3 we'll look at is what I mentioned earlier, PSP emulation. This isn't something that custom firmware puts onto your machine. It's something custom firmware unlocks. You see, Sony added PSP game support to the official firmware a long time ago, but pretty much only ever kept it able to play PSP minis on a PS3, if you even remember them. But Sony never made the full-blown PSP emulation go live on public PS3 firmware. There is a half-decent reason for this, though. It's only compatible with about 50% of the software library. That said, when you are playing one of the working games, it worked brilliantly, as you can see here with this Naruto game. Sony did put in one feature which I think is really cool. If you open up the XMB while running a PSP title, you could take a screenshot of the game and save that image onto your photos. It's just a shame that Sony gave up trying to add more compatibility to this feature, as it seems so damn close to being done. It would have been a huge selling point for both systems. If Sony had a Vita emulator built into the PS4 operating system, then maybe that handheld wouldn't have died such a tragic death. Oh well, so when it's all said and done, using the best PlayStation 3 hardware on the market in terms of look and feature set, combining that with homebrew software and enabling debug features, full region unlocking and with the ability to play any PS1, PS2, PS3 or digital software, this makes this the greatest PlayStation 3 in the world. Right, that's it. Have a